Okay, I think we're getting close here. Sorry, my computer is slowly, slowly warming up. Let me do that. Let me see if I can actually make this work here. Yeah, Batman and Bat Jim and Robic. I like that, George. That's good. So it's good to see everybody here. I'm <clears throat> really looking forward to showing you everything that we've been working on here. Uh, I've got my virtual machines almost warmed up here. Got Derek logging in. Derek, can I? Did I just add you? I think I added you, Derek. Yeah, you did. Yeah, okay. Derek and I are going to give a presentation. Is it right after this, Derek? It is. You, you're back so, to back. So we can just like flow right into that one. You'll, you'll get all the kinks worked out during your super impressive dragon presentation for us. Yeah, probably. So I'm going to try to share my screen. We'll see if I can pull this off. Um, OK. All right. Am I now sharing my screen? Yep. OK, great. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. Um, I'd like to do some uh, demos, so I'll try to, to not spend all my time here. So um, a lot of folks have kind of see, seen some of this before. I'll start out by saying VIPM uh, at its ninth birthday uh, here, which is pretty exciting. Uh, we're going on 20, looking forward to the next 10 years of LabVIEW. It's great to see a lot of focus on LabVIEW and current gen, and um, we're looking forward to doing some great things with VIPM and, of course, Dragon. So um, uh, I think what I'll do here is talk about Dragon. Um, a lot of you have, have kind of seen some of this before and kind of want to get to a demo of where we're at today, but just a quick background. Um, National Instruments historically has recommended installing stuff under vi.lib add-ons. Uh, it's okay for, for test and measurement stations, but it's really cumbersome for switching between projects. Um, and so nobody really wants to do that, and it doesn't work well for software engineering. So the reason why we created VIPM 19 years ago is so that we could do better software engineering and share reusable code and manage dependencies. Um, we're now at a point probably past the point where uh, we, we don't want to use this old way of installing stuff under LabVIEW. We want virtual environments in our project. So VIPM does have a feature called VI package configurations, which make it easy to keep track of which packages a project uses. Um, and also, many developers are using virtual machines, one for each project, uh, so they don't have to install and install anything when moving between projects. They're very large in size. Snapshotting can help. Um, it's still kind of cumbersome with licensing. And in fact, one of the reasons why I was late today, uh, switching to a virtual machine that I haven't used in a while, Windows decides that it needs to download you know, two gigs of updates and install them before I can do anything. Um, and so you know, that's very cumbersome to manage. Um, licensing updates to OS. The, the other thing that we'll mention is uh, there's another technology that's really promising um, called containers, such as Docker uh, and other technologies. Um, those from the LabVIEW perspective are still kind of coming online. There are issues uh, related especially to activating LabVIEW in kind of a headless fashion. So let's go ahead and uh, jump in. So kind of the promises of Pro Project Dragon are to install packages underneath your project source folder into a LabVIEW virtual environment. <clears throat> and so instead of installing it globally, they get installed into your project. And the nice thing is you can work on multiple LabVIEW projects that each use different versions of packages. And that also means uh, the way that we've implemented it, that you can have multiple LabVIEW projects open at the same time. The other big thing that we wanted to do with Project Dragon uh, that we're currently uh, finalizing is to provide a one-click setup experience when checking out LabVIEW projects from source code control. So I, I have a just imagine here, but basically what, what we want to do as developers 
is have a machine <laughs> and you know have a project folder where we're working and you know type git clone and then the repository URL and pull the code and then change directory into that folder and you know double click something or type a single simple command and then have something walk us through installing everything that we need to install in order to work on that project. And so that's that's where we'd like to be headed. And we're actually pretty pretty close to there with Project Dragon. So I'm excited to show you some of that. So I think that's where we're at now. A demo. Cool. Derek, how are we doing? Are we still still kind of there? Still a little bit. Okay, thanks, Derek. So your VM um, struggles. What's that? Andrew agreed with your VM struggles. Oh geez, right? It's 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 a hard life. Okay, I'm gonna make these a little bit bigger here so people can see. We'll go 20. Can you guys see uh, the PowerShell fairly well? A little small because of the stage setup, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make it bigger here. That's probably gonna be good. So um, when when we install Dragon, um, Dragon doesn't have any dependencies on LabVIEW or, or VIPM uh, in order to actually run. And, and that's pretty cool because uh, it allows uh, everything to be bootstrapped. And so after you install, download and install it, it'll add this command to, to your shell. And you can see that it's basically a command line interface. There is a graphical user interface to this. And um, I'm gonna show you guys uh, some of the commands here. So I have, let's see, uh, LabVIEW, I think I have a folder in there. Um, Oh, right, that's a different folder. Uh, CD. Um, actually, I need to temporarily stop sharing my screen just so that I can make sure that I'm in the right spot here. And then I'll reshare. GitHub. All right, let's see. Mike was I asking in chat if you've ever tried the new Windows terminal. Uh, what is the new Windows terminal? Tab? Did it let you pick a different type of terminal per tab, I believe? Well, that's cool. No, I haven't tried that. What's the, what's the secret code to doing that? So what I'm going to try here is to uh, clone this folder, LabVIEW collection extension. So this, this folder uh, is a uh, GitHub repository. And uh, it's it's got some uh, some VIs that add to the LabVIEW maps and sets, and so we've now cloned this project. And if I change directories into there, let's see if that works. There we go. So in here, there's a .dot dragon file, and what we would like to be able to do is essentially just start start coding on the project right away, right away. And I don't think VIPM. Uh, let's see if it's it's running. So I'm I'm using a command line interface, but I also wanted to show you that there is uh, a graphical user interface that I'll get to. So if we type 
dragon list require. <clears throat> uh, I think maybe this project doesn't have any dependencies yet, and so this will be a good a good case. Um, if if I didn't have LabVIEW installed, uh, the if we type dragon install, and I, I think that this currently uh, isn't totally plugged in yet, but we can install things like LabVIEW. So if we want LabVIEW 2021. What it's going to do is it's going to download it and run it for us. And it'll walk us through uh, the installation process. Now, I already have LabVIEW installed. And so what's going to happen here is it's just going to kind of know off as it gets through. But when you first pull your project from source code control and you want to set up your development environment to work on it, the first thing that you're going to want to do is to make sure that you have LabVIEW installed. OK. so. Let me get rid of these, and let's go back to the uh, collection extensions here. We'll take a look at this folder. How are the questions looking right now, Derek? You're good. OK, great. So let's see what happens when I double click this. So when I double click, it should open up here. Mm -hmm. oh, there we go. So it was hung up. It's waiting, asking me if I want to install LabVIEW 2021. I'm just going to cancel out of that. And you can see it's done. Um, it also supports uh, installing other versions of LabVIEW 64-bit. Um, it can install uh, LabVIEW Community Edition, too. So the idea is when you first pull you do a drag and install, it'll check to see whether or not you have the required LabVIEW versions installed. And if not, it'll, it'll prompt you if you want to install those, uh, as well as other drivers and stuff like that if it requires DACMX, for instance. So Got a I now have questions. Yeah. Uh, what about stuff like DACMX, NIRT, Compact Rio, and other toolkits? Uh, to install on the system? Yeah. So it, it's not currently all plugged in and working right at the moment, but yes, that's that's what's gonna that's what's gonna work here shortly. So I, I don't have that demoable right this second. Sorry, my computer is still going painfully slow. I, I had to force quit it, so I bet Windows is still doing something in the background. So uh, this Dragon file is a plain text file uh, that lists the dependencies. And it currently uh, links to your VIPC file for people who want uh, to use VIPC files. It stores information about the LabVIEW version requirement, fitness requirements, and also whether the project is using a virtual environment or not. And I'll show you that here in a second once this starts up. Um, and then uh, when you add other dependencies, uh, those will be stored in here, the, the non-packet, uh, the IPM package dependencies. There's a dependency section that's not in there yet. OK. so. <clears throat> If we wanted to uh, use a package here, so now I'm in the user interface, and um, we can see here, you know, I actually do have a fair amount of packages installed in this version of LabVIEW. Um, I think this is 32-bit LabVIEW 2020. Um, and Currently, I, I don't have any of those defined in my package configuration. So at the moment, uh, I think I'm just going to roll with this and show you guys. Say I wanted the MGI array. You can choose that here. OK, I think. 
There's some networking stuff maybe going on. Sometimes when the computer restarts, lab use the AI server decides it doesn't want to listen anymore. Do this a slightly different way. Let's see here. So The, the MGI package is MGI array, right? Let's see, what's the low level package name here? Okay, I guess I could search too. So, one of the things you can do too is you can search. Hopefully, let's see if this works. So, it's Switching uh, targets here to that LabVIEW version. Oh, cool. So you can actually search from the command line too, which is kind of nice. We wanted to make sure that the command line interface had all the features of the UI. So here, I'll just copy that. There we go. And you can see it's using VIPM to make sure that we switch to the correct version of LabVIEW behind the scenes. While this is starting up, um, yeah, Derek. Who was it? There any, uh, any good questions? Yeah, I'm just trying to remember. Uh, Nathan actually was uh, asking about mm -hmm. considerations for target configuration. <clears throat> like if you had a PXI or Compact Rio as part of a development. Mm. Yeah, so I guess that would be um, a, like a max configuration, for example. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. Um, really cool. Yeah, he says yes. Yeah, so I guess my, the best practice that I'm aware of would be to save your max configuration to a file that's kept in your project folder. Um, and then, you know, as part of an initialization uh, process, if it were a command line, uh, you could initialize that as well. This currently doesn't uh, integrate with max configurations. Uh, we've been kind of focused on the um, LabVIEW tools developer use case and projects that are using LabVIEW tools. Okay, so um, we can see that, that those have been uh, installed now. And let's go here. Okay, great. So we can see that there's a lot of packages that are currently installed in my global environment. And this, this kind of points to a, a change, well, not a change, but a process that people are going to need to go through when they migrate a project, which would be to uninstall from the global environment. Um, we, what we can do if we wanted to uh, add the MGI to our configuration, we would basically right click on it here. And what we hope happens there, there, now we can see that it turns orange, which is meant to indicate that it's in our package configuration. And I believe now if we list required in the project, we'll see that the MGI is required. Um, and we can do that from the, um, the command line as well. And if we add package to our VIPC, 
once it adds it to the VIPC, we can see that it's um, there too. And we want it to be compatible with uh, package configurations because that's how a lot of people uh, use this currently. If you are adding a new project, opening a new project with Dragon, it, and you browse to the folder, uh, it will automatically discover a package configuration that you're using and store that information about it. The configuration data for your project, and this is basically the same information that's in that .dragon file, is it allows you to give it kind of a high level name, which is what's displayed here, collection extensions. Uh, it can link to a project file, which allows you to then uh, see your project in this window. And this is a LabVIEW uh, actual project window uh, that's been embedded to make the process easier for folks. And then if your package has a um, VIPB, which is a build specification, it shows over here on the left side, there's a, a build uh, button to open the builder. And we've integrated it like this because if your project is has a, a virtual environment, um, we integrate with that to make sure that the, the package can be built and using the uh, the virtual environment for resolving all the dependencies and stuff. Um, let's see here. Any other questions kind of coming so far? We haven't we haven't shown the virtual environments feature yet, and I've uh, been holding off a little bit because of all the different packages we need to uninstall. But I can go ahead and do that. Oh, nothing else yet. Okay. Comment that embedding the uh, Project Explorer is black magic. The pro what was that embedding the Project Explorer? Yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> nothing easy about that. So um, Dragon integrates also with uh, M, uh, the NI package manager as well uh, for installing certain packages. Um, and I'm not sure how well this will work. Let me open the NI package manager. I'm going to uninstall the NGI Solution Explorer just to show how that can be installed through Dragon as well. I've been using that a bit with you lately, Derek, and I really like it. It makes you scream less when you're using PPLs, right? Uh, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I only got to onboard the new person, but everything I've been doing is a single PPL at the higher okay. at the higher level. So, yeah. Okay, so I think we have the MGI Solution Explorer uninstalled. And so now, I think I can do this while the APM is doing it. Otherwise, it will crash my system and I'll have to reboot. Okay. Let's close this before it complains that there's lots of instances running. There we go. And I think, there we go, was that easy? So what about projects that require activation and licensing? Yeah, the um, so LabVIEW will certainly show you that right when you um, when you go to open it that they require activation. So that that's a good question. I'll need to actually you know kind of test that experience. Um, now, are you referring to um, projects or 
packages that use that third party licensing and activation or the NI activation? Because oh, you can install stuff from NIPM. Um, and somebody else mm -hmm. in chat had asked about stuff like test stand. And mm -hmm. those are things that require activation and licensing through NI. Yeah, right, exactly. So you'll still need to, to do that. Um, there may be maybe hooks where we could, you know, log in and things like that through the command line. Um, I think uh, the the way that we're going to kind of get through a lot of this, I think, is through kind of just a brute force, you know, with the machete through the jungle. Um, you know, with respect to like Docker, Docker has a huge issue with um, you know licensing LabVIEW and how to do that in a headless way. And I think more and more people, especially as, as we start using tools like this, uh, we're going to bump our heads up against those use cases and the limitations of the current APIs of like NI package manager or the NI license manager or the third party licensing and activation toolkit, um, or even VIPM activation too is something, you know, we're working on for folks that want to automatically activate a pro license. So, um, yeah, we don't have all the, the answers worked out yet, but it's something we're going to sharpen the machetes and forge ahead. So Andrew's asking about uh, Windows permissions and uh, LabVIEW developers that don't have full admin rights on their systems. Yeah, that's for, for the NI hardware, that's obviously a tough one. Um, I don't think we can yet in solve that problem until NI kind of fundamentally helps us solve that problem with respect to where drivers and things like that get installed. Okay, we're getting close to the part where I can show the demo of the per project package installation, which will be fun. And then Nathan's asking about integration with other installers, particularly the LabVIEW custom installers, which can be configured to do. Okay, so when we say the LabVIEW custom installers, are we talking about NI Package Manager based installers or the old school? the installer build specs from LabVIEW. Yeah, so the the MSI based installers um, that, you know, National Instruments has said that it's basically deprecating that and moving forward, that's not going to be the path that they support. And so um, what I would say is that, you know, Dragon will be integrating, you know, very well with an i package manager um, for example even installing uh, like the LabVIEW runtime engines um, so there, there's a lot of good possibilities there for kind of integrating if if people are willing to go the route of using ni packages for installing their applications um, however you know there are there are some, I would say, pain points with respect to the user experience that I think um, application developers using LabVIEW might not want to uh, deal with right now. So, for example, you know, if you build an NI package-based installer, um, you know, the end user has to have NI package manager installed. Um, there isn't yet a way to kind of like bundle up the little bootstrapper around it uh, to essentially have it like, you know, self extract itself, make sure that all of the um, .NET components and things like that are uh, installed in the system and then install NI package manager before it actually installs your executable. Um, but I think that those kinks probably will get worked out. So that's kind of a long way of, of basically saying, um, no, we're not planning on integrating directly with the old MSI-based installers. Um, but there, there could be, you know, good, good workarounds. 
Um, OK, so now that we have everything uninstalled here, it's saying uh, we're missing the MGI error handling. So this is actually a demonstration of one of the cool features is when you first open a Dragon project and you don't have the required packages installed, it's going to tell you. So I'm going to say no for now. And the reason why is before I install anything, I want to change this project's configuration to install everything beneath the project. And I think now we're waiting on lab view. There we go. Um, so we're going to check this checkbox and save. And then hopefully here, there we go in a second. We can see that it initialized a virtual environment for LabVIEW 2020, and it's putting it in this LVVENV folder. So that's this folder right here. And right now, all it has is this file in it that helps us know that it's a real virtual environment folder. And we're now configured in our project to install packages under the Dragon project folder. So if we go over here now, um, that might be a, a refresh issue. The array, it says they're required, but not under the virtual environment. It's probably because it needs to reload itself. Let me see what happens if we do that. I might have just found a bug. Alex is asking if he's already missed the very basic usage example. Yeah, so um, we're going to get to that in just a second here. I'm going to temporarily remove these guys from the package configuration. And it says MGI array is installed, but I don't believe that because I believe we uninstalled everything. So the, the basic use case is um, I've got a project and I want to have all the packages that are installed be installed under my project so I can easily switch between projects. So that's the fundamental use case. I want it to be really easy to switch between projects. I don't want to have to actively uninstall globally and then reinstall globally the dependencies. Was that fairly clear? Or are there more questions? Okay, good. These guys are somehow I think that guy didn't actually get fully uninstalled, but I'll take a look at that. Um, okay, so let's say that we want the uh, the OpenG numeric now. So we'll install that. There we go. I think it's getting some information over the network and it's a little slow. Okay, there we go. Okay, great. And let me just close that and make sure that this is working. Um, and I'm not sure if the pallets are going to be working right this second. Let me, there is one package that's required to be installed globally, uh, which is uh, a VIPM extensions. And I think what ended up happening is when I uninstalled everything, that got uninstalled. So there will be global package install, global packages still installed. One example of that is um, tools that add project providers. Right now, right now the um, The LabVIEW environment doesn't really support virtualization of uh, certain tools. And so it is going to be the case where tools developers will need to specify when they're creating their tool whether the tool needs to be installed into the global environment or whether it can be installed into the virtual environment. And over the next, like, say, couple of years, um, we're going to be pushing on NI and I'm hoping we can get other folks to uh, kind of push along with us to get NI to um, add new features 
to LabVIEW, which allow us to virtualize even project providers, for example, if there were a way uh, to kind of dynamically reconfigure and kind of the, the LabVIEW IDE to uh, be looking underneath the project folder, for example, inside of a virtual environment. And we can see that actually there are uh, package files here. There's a little VIPM database, which specifies which packages are installed in this virtual environment. And then there's a vi.lib or an lv.lib folder that contains all of the subfolders that would normally be beneath lab view, such as user lib. And all the files get installed under there. This extensions package, if it works, which I hope it does, is going to make it so that the palettes um, synchronize when I switch projects. And so this is going to be the big question here. And it was working before, but it seems like it maybe is not working right. So do I have one in here called collection extensions? I don't think I do. So I've got some kind of uh, bug happening uh, at the moment with that. Let's see if I can uninstall it and reinstall it, and then hopefully it'll just magically work. And I think one aspect that's worth mentioning is uh, getting some of these things to actually work in LabVIEW is relatively hard to do. Uh, and we will be working closely with NI to um, resolve some of these things and improve some of the project integration. Okay. Nathan is asking about integration with GitHub. Uh, GitHub, yeah. GitHub <laughs> configurator. Um, so you could like automatically update on switch checkout or trigger out oh. when pushing, committing. Um, what kind of integration were you thinking about for that? And then Mohammed is asking, is the LabVIEW project window attached to the Dragon Workspace window? Yeah, it is. Um, and and it can also be uh, detached. We're currently kind of playing around with what user experience people would like. Do people have thoughts on that? My guess is if it works well, people will like it. And if it doesn't work well, they won't. Yeah, I'll add in that since this stuff is kind of hard to see with this condensed screen area there are three dots yeah. that will show up in the upper right when you hover over the video and you can full mm -hmm. screen just the screen share oh, okay so i'm still hoping to show you guys so essentially what happens is there's a there's a new sub palette that gets added and i'm not sure how i broke it in the latest build but uh, basically what happens when you switch projects, there's another palette in there that shows all of the packages installed for your project. Um, and then if you actually switch over to a completely different uh, context, then that project's packages show up. Um, maybe I could even try that as a, as a test here. So let me explore here. And I'm just going to copy that. And so this is a package that I've been working on uh, with some others on package building tools that allow uh, unpacking and repacking packages so that during kind of like after the build process, there can be uh, modifications done to the package specs, uh, the files themselves and other things uh, to essentially extend features of the IPM that maybe uh, don't yet exist. Okay, so let's open this. And I'll say, um, you put it in here. And we can see it found a, uh, a VIPB file. And I'm going to save that. And then let's see here. Oh, I think it's trying to pull it inside that folder. So there's the package build tools. 
And then um, by default, it said it's going to install packages under uh, the Dragon project folder. And then let's give that a try and see here if we can make this work. I'll install the OpenG Boolean. Data clarifying uh, GitHub questions. Uh, basically, predicting uh, virtual environment state, it sounded like, or, or like dependency state. If you're checking out an older commit uh, or you're trying to push something, maybe you want to be able to enforce some. Uh, constraints. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a good one. I guess what I would say is, if there's a very specific question, um, that can be posted to uh, the forums, and we have set up a, a dragon forum here that's uh, now publicly visible today with a bunch of getting started information on forums.vipm.io. And you can go there. Uh, currently, uh, we're doing a new build. This link is currently disabled uh, while we get the new build up there shortly. But you can also um, post all your questions in there and even read through all the Getting Started docs and videos about how it works. Uh, so this is a good example. Somebody asked, what about activation? Um, when, when you start it, it's going to ask for activation. There are ways, I think, of um, working with Anize activation service server, uh, either through the command line or through file IO. Um, I'm just going to activate and hopefully the gods. That was me that asked, anticipating follow ups from people asking about test stand and stuff. Mm. Yeah, so there's some questions about test stand. I'm going to just try that view then. Yeah, I know oh. there, there are some command line um, tooling around NM Package Manager where you can invoke activation if you're if you've got it configured to you can in the command line configure it to point at volume license servers or um, hmm. or stuff like that. So it doesn't activate in every case, but uh, a lot of the activation workflows are exposed to the command line. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I'm noticing here for some reason it says that there's a a new version of this. Oh, because we're in Labby 2021 now. So, okay. Let's see. Let's see if that works for me. And I think, what is the issue here? I think maybe because it doesn't have a VFPC file. If we had, uh, save that. Yeah, for some reason, it's not showing those installed packages. Oh, we've installed the collection extensions. And then where did the uh, Boolean get installed? I'm so stepping away from the computer quick. I'll be right back. Yeah, no problem. And we're at a 10 minutes. Oh, because I've got a search filter going on here. Yeah, so it says those things are installed, and I'm not sure why they're not showing up. I, I think I've got a couple bugs here. I've been scrambling to get things done, and I've broken a few things in the process. So I'm going to switch uh, back over so I can see the questions, and then I'd be happy to answer questions directly here. Okay. And then... All right, so let's see. Uh, if anybody has uh, questions, I'm going to switch over to the Q&A. So 18 minutes ago, what would be the best way to find out the exact package names to use with the Dragon CLI? Seems to me that it could become tricky, especially since it supports both VIPM and NIPM. So the, uh, the search feature of Dragon will show uh, the names of packages that match the search. Um, right now, the the list that it shows uh, shows like the name and the latest version, but it doesn't show whether it's a VIPM or an MI package. So we'll need to add a column to that so you can see. Um, and then you can also you know get details 
on a package to see, you know, once it shows up on the list, um, you know, more information about that package by its name. Uh, so Matthias, hopefully that answers your question. But yeah, there, there will be some trickiness to remember all of the detailed um, package names. One of the thoughts that I had too is um, with things like Python and pip, they're essentially, they're sort of like, um, you know, it's, it's a namespace, right, of package names. And the most popular, you know, packages sort of have the easiest names. Uh, <clears throat> so it might be nice uh, to simplify some of the names of those packages or have aliases. Okay, another question. Any plan to do unintended install of LabVIEW as part of Dragon instead of bringing up the NIPM dialog? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that is the, uh, the end goal. Um, so there's, there's some different like command line switches and things like that can be done as well. Um, it's not totally done yet though. But great question. I'm gonna give you a thumbs up for that. Um, Steve Dusing asks, is Dragon currently available for use? If not, is there a planned release date? Yeah, so uh, I have introduced a few bugs. I would say uh, by the end of the week, uh, it'll be out live to the public. I hope that answers your question too, Jorg. And you can expect that we will make posts on LinkedIn and all the other social media outlets. Any other questions? I think one, one thought that I <clears throat> wanted to mention is um, we intend to release this uh, for Linux too, not initially. Uh, however, um, we're a bit overdue for uh, a Linux build of BIPM. Um, we wanna support Linux with this as well. And um, National Instruments, you know, has indicated that the support for LabVIEW and also its um, con system configuration management tools are going to be um, well supported in Linux in the future. And so that's that's an area where I'm personally really interested in as well, uh, especially the idea of being able to um, use containers for builds and maybe even the possibility of, um, you know, if LabVIEW somehow in the future supported cross compilation of PPLs, for example, or maybe even creating PPLs that stored binary information for multiple platforms. So that would be interesting as well. Yeah, any ideas on licensing yet? Um, we're still working out all the details. Um, it's uh, it's going to be very complementary with the current VIPM licensing schemes. There's absolutely going to be free community edition, um, and we want to make this uh, generally available to folks. So we're still working out all the details on that, but it'll be free during the beta period for sure. Any other good questions? We've got five minutes left until Derek and I present again in another room. I'm gonna switch back over to the chat here. Free community edition is great. Thank you, Jorg, I think so too. I'm really excited about the community edition of uh, LabVIEW. We have, we have seen a tremendous number of people starting to use LabVIEW 2020 and um, there's a lot of great activity happening in GitHub, and it's just really wonderful that people can contribute on these free open source libraries together without having to pay a lot of money when we're not using it for work. So what inspired you to make Dragon? Are you saying what inspired the Dragon itself as a mascot or the actual tool, Nathan? Because that's a really good question. Um, and I think in terms of, uh, oh, how did you get to the tool? So I, 
I would say it's kind of a combination of different forces. One is uh, for for this release, we absolutely uh, we absolutely had to address the per project package installation use case. It was absolutely the number one requested feature of all the users, and so um, it made sense for that to be a huge focus. Um, additionally. The, the whole reason for wanting per project package installation is because we want it to be really easy to open a project. <laughs> when we, we do a git pull and we want to like, you know, double click on one file or type one command and then we want it to just configure everything. And uh, making sure that we have the right version of lab view or that a brand new user on github who like pulls the code like we want the instructions for how to like edit and contribute this to be as short as possible and so if that instruction can be like you know click here to open in github desktop and then by the way you need dragon installed and then double click on this dragon file or type this command from the console and then it'll walk you through the whole process. And then hopefully if they have a fast internet connection, it'll only take them two hours to install the community. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, maybe 20 minutes to install LabVIEW Community Edition. And then they're editing the code and they're you know making pull requests and stuff like that. And so that really is like been like the whole driving goal of this is to really get rid of like all the painful, tedious barriers to checking out and working on LabVIEW projects and switching between them. And so the per project installation and the installing the required NI dependencies, they really kind of go hand in hand with that same use case. And the dragon, I like the dragon too. Um, and also too, in terms of inspiration, because that was a question that was asked, Python, in terms of PIP package manager in virtual environments, a lot of insp inspiration there. If pythons are cool, dragons are going to be even cooler, right? All right. Um, so I'm going to, I think, head out here. I'm going to screenshot a few of these questions here so that I can get to you all later. But uh, it was a pleasure spending an hour with you. Thank you so much for all your time and attention. It's so great to see you all. I'll, I'll, I'll wait one more minute because I see lots of applause emojis coming in, and that's fine. Okay. Uh, and if you want to see something really cool, come to the other room where Derek and I are going to show you how to uh, deploy your G code to microcontrollers like these little $4 Raspberry Pi 